Hi, John Ludi here. J-O-H-N-L-U-D-I, and you can find my music on hmm, platforms such as SoundCloud and this here YouTube and um, uh, Bandcamp and uh, grudgingly Spotify. Okay, all that aside, don't go to my normal website because my normal website just kind of sucks. <laughs> so, so this is the last off-grid John. I know the last one was going to be the last one. But this is the last one, uh, several years hence, because I have sold Tickville. I have sold this beautiful piece of woods in southwest Wisconsin <clears throat> for several different reasons, but mostly the pragmatic aspects of it have just completely gone away. And I've gotten old. I have gotten old. Um, I'm almost 60. And it's gotten harder and harder to do the off-grid lifestyle. And there are things that I miss about civilization, like bathtubs and uh, heat. And, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so this is it. And I guess what I wanted to do was just kind of briefly talk about the yurt and... Um, because I did uh, probably my most popular, <clears throat> my most popular video was uh, why a yurt. I think I don't know. I got like twenty thousand views or something like that. I can't remember. But <clears throat> um, in it, I was praising the virtues of yurt living, and I would say I still like it with some reservations. Um, <clears throat> part of it is location, location, location. Um, these things bear the elements <laughs> in different ways. And um, down there, where you see those two beautiful little minivans, um, used to be where the yurt lived. And <clears throat> got a fair amount of sun. It was pretty hot in midsummer. Uh, but I had the yurt with the uh, with the opener up there, so heat would convect through there. So that was a good thing. If you're going to order one of these from Pacific Yurts or anybody, make sure you get one <laughs> where the dome opens, because you know you get smoke from a fire, um, <clears throat> too much heat or too much damp. It's really good to be able to open that thing. Um, so I moved this thing. I was going to build a cabin down there at one point. Uh, and uh, so I moved this whole thing <clears throat> up the hill and took the platform that had been down there and put it up here. And and so there's like a eh, like about a four foot elevation up front here. And then it practically rests on the ground in the back. <clears throat> um I've had to fortify this thing because it basically sits on deck blocks. I've had to uh, reinforce it, especially recently, uh, just to add security to it and put in some chains and stuff so it just doesn't go tumbly. It has settled a bit. It's kind of cheated a bit to, um, to the right when you're facing it. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, that's been, <laughs> that's been impossible to keep clean. But I am underneath this lovely canopy of, of trees, which give me ample amounts of dirt. Um, so a few different things about this. There's another safety chain there. Um, it's being under all these trees, the weathering has been problematic. Uh, been lots of difficulties with um, with mold. Lots of difficulties with mold, especially this year. Southwest Wisconsin got blessed with uh, a ton of moisture, lots of rain. Um, <clears throat> plus, I guess it's a phenomenon involving cornfields where they produce all this uh, all this moisture, and we certainly have plenty of those around here. Um, so the mold issues, I've had mold on my clothes. I've had mold on my guitar cases. 
I have had mold on the canvas itself. This canvas is 15 years old, and it's remained largely intact, but it has become a mold catch on the inside. Um, <clears throat> so that's been a problem. The other problem that I have had here, um, and I will <laughs> going to show you. So, if I ever write my memoirs, which no one would ever read, so I don't know why I would write them, but if I ever do, they will be called Of Mice and Mold, <laughs> because that is what mice do. That is what mice do to a yurt. They, uh, they chew, and they chew, and they chew. So that's been a real problem. I would say the two issues that I have had uh, predominantly with um, the yurt have had to do with... Um, Mold and mice. <clears throat> this has also been a problem. The door, uh, over 15 years, lots of rain on it. So the rain got to that over, you know, 15 years that I've had the thing. Uh, and then the carpenter ants got to it. And, yeah. So you want to be close to nature? Nature wants to be close to you. Let's get up close and personal and touch you in many ways so yeah um <clears throat> the inside has weathered reasonably well but as mentioned the uh, the inside side cover is canvas and just like a tent that's left out for 15 years in the rain and moisture um it gets rainy and moist and it gets fungus and stuff on it and I have found no good way to really get rid of it I mean I've been using like 50 50 vinegar and water uh, to kill the stuff and I'm sure that's weakening the canvas but you know the only thing that I've tried and I've tried like about a dozen different sprays mold sprays nothing has worked the only thing that I think would probably work is uh Bleach, and uh, certainly not going to use bleach on canvas or on the vinyl top. The vinyl top has had some mold issues too, not as bad as the canvas, um, but yeah, that, um, that's been an issue, but it's more unsightly. The mold grows a lot faster on the canvas. The dome has held up reasonably well. It's got a little bit of a dinge to it. I'd probably need to, I just cleaned it, but I probably need to do another, another cleaning of it. Um, <clears throat> all the wood in here has held up wonderfully. Center ring has, has held up. Um, discontents that I have about the design. And I don't know, you know, maybe this is something that's just, you know, native to my particular year, but I always had a problem, um, I always had a problem matching the screens to the, uh, the Velcro of the screens to the Velcro of, uh, <clears throat> on the yurt, on the side cover itself, and so that's allowed mice to get in, and speaking of mice, the other thing that's been an issue, clonk, has been, um, Stuff like that. Again, mouse issues. Mice that have chewed little holes in this very delicate screen. Um, another little hole. Probably a woodpecker. I have had some woodpecker damage, probably because I like to feed birds. And, uh, yeah, so. So that's been a problem. Um, so... Yurt. Would I recommend a yurt? On some levels, I would. On some levels, I wouldn't. Um, as a musician, uh, likes to record, likes to practice, that's been problematic because I don't like to advertise, you know, that I am a musician and that I have all kinds of instruments. Um, a yurt is not a very soundproof structure. And... You hear everything, and everything hears you. 
So when I've wanted to record things that were amplified, I mean, that were uh, like vocals and acoustic guitar and stuff like that, I've had to do it in one of those guys. Um, <clears throat> so I'm trying to think of anything else that I would say about it. But, you know, specifically this is a Pacific Yurt 16 foot. And I would say on the whole... It has maintained really well. The side cover, um, I'm trying to remember what the side cover is rated for in terms of lifespan, but I know I've exceeded it by at least five years. And despite the mouse damage, <clears throat> it has been going fairly strong. Um, one thing that I was doing every year with it as of about six, seven years ago was getting waterproof spray and spraying it outside all around the circumference of it um, every spring. And that would kind of help with some of the weathering and water damage. But at this juncture, I just kind of said, nah, you know, and if I was going to keep the thing, which I'm not, I would probably just buy a side cover replacement. And I know that Pacific Yurts has like a regular window feature where there are actually windows that open and close and you don't have to go outside and, you know, peel the things off. <laughs> and, uh, but these guys have maintained reasonably well, too. Uh, you know, a bit of mouse damage and stuff, but uh, but they've held up pretty well. I usually wash them in the spring and in the fall. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, if this had been down in the sun uh, and not, you know, up there on that hill, uh, it probably would have held up better, I'm thinking. I don't think the, um, I don't think being where it just stays damp all the time, even in relatively dry weather, uh, has done it any favors. But, uh, yeah, and I think that's it. I think that's my, uh, my yurt report so um it has been an honor and a privilege to do the off-grid thing i really did it off and on uh so not consistent but um uh, probably about six seven solid years among the time you know that i've been here but it's time to move on to other things and um uh, and a lot of that is depending on how things are in the larger world. So that's it. Take care and um, see you in better places. Bye now.